I'm Doria Fleischer, your Charles County Community Outreach Coordinator, and I am standing here with Gus Proctor, the community organizer for Charles County Sheriff's Office, and really the celebrity behind this event. And I have to say, Gus, that you are famous. This is this is you. When we know this event, we know we're going to see your face. Well, you know, um, I can't do it all by myself. Uh, this community is like no other. You know, I'm, I'm the uh, regional coordinator for this county, for this area, and. You know, talking with other agencies throughout the state, uh, nobody has it like we have it here in Charles County. So uh, this, for, for me, this is a prime thing. It's all about our community. So how many torch runs is this for you? This will be my 15th year as the coordinator, and it's, it is steady getting bigger and bigger uh, each year. This year was a little bit more challenging because of COVID, and you know, we had to reschedule because of the rain last month. But hopefully, you know, uh, within the next year, so we will we'll, uh, get back to some, you know, some type of a normalcy. That would be lovely, I think, but we can't complain about today. It's beautiful weather, there are people everywhere, and it looks like everyone just had an amazing day. Absolutely gorgeous day. Thank you everybody for coming out. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, again, there's absolutely uh, no county like Charles County. I'm thrilled to be out at the Torch Run today talking with two of our amazing walkers. We have Cindy Garner and Nancy Faulkner here with us today. And I'm curious, are you in the uh, in the walk group or the running group today? Oh no, the walking group, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> And what uh, what made you come out to the torch run today? Why is this event important to you? Uh, I think it's it's very important to support community and, and uh, the area. And uh, that's my friend of mine has a special needs child, and I think that's important to support them. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. And and what's your history with the torch run? Is this your first time, or are you here before? I think it's my seventh time. I think I have seven shirts. Um, I think it's a it's a great fundraiser and Charles County has been always very successful and having a large crowd come out every year doing this and so last year we didn't get to do it because of the pandemic and this year they had to reschedule a couple times so here we are finally. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you both so much for talking with us today. I hope you have a wonderful and safe walk. I am standing here with some spectacular people representing Springdale, one of our great Charles County organizations. I have Elise Carolyn, Christy, Haley, and Jackie. And I would love to hear from you guys about what you're doing out here today. So Carolyn, starting with you, is this your first torch run? Yes. And what are you most excited about today? What are you looking forward to? Walk the, walk the torch run. You're gonna walk the torch run. Are you gonna run at all or just walk? Just walk. Just walk. Gotcha. Elise, nice to see you today. I gotta walk. You're gonna walk also? Excellent. Elise, you look like you've got tons of energy. Are you ready for an amazing day out in the sunshine? Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. And Christy, I love that you've got your Torch Run shirt on with your matching sweatshirt. Are you looking forward to being out today? Yeah. Is there anything you're really excited about for today? Yeah, walking. You're looking forward to being out there. It looks like we've got a big crowd, right? Do you think you guys will be in the speedy group? Yeah. That makes me happy. I bet you guys will take the lead. And Jackie, you are with Springdale, yes? yes? Excellent. Tell us a little bit about what Springdale's doing here today. Springdale is here to support the Torch Run. We are here to enjoy and be among our, our uh, peers in the community. And we are here to have a great time. I'm here with Bob Mock, who's on the Special Operations with the Department of Emergency Services. And Bob, thank you for being with us today. Oh, you're very welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So tell me about why you're here today, um, both professionally and also what this means to you as a community member. So I'm here to support the Special Olympics, obviously, as everyone else is. Um, it's a fun day. It's going to be a fun day. It's perfect weather. We couldn't have ordered anything better. Um, I think this is a great, uh, uh, the Special Olympics is a great uh, organization. They do a lot of good in the community and, and have for a long time. Excellent. And I see a lot of Department of Emergency Services faces out here today, which is wonderful. Are you guys here to walk? Are you here to work? A little bit of both? So we're here in a couple of different capacities. Obviously, we're here to support the runners in an emergency services fashion. Somebody has a medical emergency. There's also a, a group of us here who are participating in the run and walk. Wonderful, and we've got this this cool toy behind us, yeah? Yes, yes, so this is one of the vehicles, our ATV, that's gonna follow uh, one of the groups of runners or walkers in case somebody needs some assistance for whatever. If they can't make the run, if they have a medical emergency, we're here to take care of them. We have two of them, both of them are be staffed with emergency services people, some medical folks and whatnot. Wonderful, thank you so much for talking with You're us welcome. today. Thank you. I'm standing here with Corporal Rochelle Williams of the Charles County Sheriff's Office, who is going to tell us a little bit about the recruiting efforts that Charles County Sheriff's Office does. But 
Rochelle, before I start, I just want to say how beautiful it is to look out and see so many officers, young, old, new veterans, some retired, hanging out around today. So when you look out, do you just see all of your community out here? I do. I see my community and I see a lot of prospects. We're currently hiring for police and corrections, along with the $2,100 sound on bonus for corrections. Love to see the fresh faces and the family environment. I absolutely love it. Wonderful. And how long have you been with the Sheriff's Office? 17 years. Excellent. So if somebody's interested in applying? Absolutely. Visit our website, Google Charles County Sheriff's Office. I'll be on the, uh, we're on the website, Instagram, hit us up. The torch run was spectacular. I went out for a walk and had an amazing time. I am a little bit hot and sweaty now, but in a good way. I'm standing here next to Shana, who I think probably put me to shame and walked way faster than I did. Hi, Shana. Will you introduce yourself to us? My name is Shana Lee Shawar, and I've been going uh, got torch run for a year for a long time, and I'm 52 right now. 52 years old, and you said you've been coming to the Torch Run for so many years. You must have a so lot of T-shirts. So many years. So, what is yeah. your favorite part about being out here at the Torch oh, Run? My, the whole thing. The whole thing is my favorite sport. I am standing here with Sheriff Troy Berry, and I have to say, Sheriff Berry, I feel like you invited me to the world's greatest party today. I feel kind of honored to be your guest on a beautiful outdoor party. So, tell us about this great event you put on. This is a wonderful day for a wonderful event and a wonderful organization. Special Olympics of Maryland is an outstanding organization helping our young athletes in reference to intellectual disabilities so they can perform and support them uh, in their future endeavors. So it's just an outstanding event here today. That's wonderful and amazing to see the whole community. So I saw Department of Emergency Services, I saw a lot of athletes, I saw a lot of families and community members, but I also saw a lot of your officers, both in uniform and out. So tell me about what it's like for you to look out and see so many of your staff and team here today. Community engagement is critically important for any law enforcement entity. So I inherited an organization that was very community oriented over time and we have, have wonderful partners in the community, whether that's the faith-based community, our nonprofit community, our business community. So that's what's best about Charles County and it just culminates into this wonderful day with Special Olympics of Maryland. That's wonderful, thank you. And I appreciate it. We were out on the road. Everybody was keeping us safe and having fun. So thank you for doing this for us today. It is a beautiful way to come out and celebrate Charles County and the residents who make it so special. Absolutely. Go Special Olympics of Maryland. Do you want to make positive contributions in your Charles County community but aren't sure where to start? Join one of Charles County's boards, commissions, or committees to see current vacancies and submit an application. Visit www.charlescountymd.gov and follow the boards and commissions links. Stepping up to serve the Charles County community will allow you to shape the county's present and future. <laughs> Applying for jobs with Charles County government is now easier and more efficient. Visit www.charlescountymd.gov for more information. I'm Mike Callahan and today this is Cobb Island Monarch Made at Old Fisherman's Field. It's an event that is about 12 years old. We're back again this year in a miniature form. It's hosted by the Cobb Island Citizens Association and the Cobb Island Fire Department and EMS and Auxiliary. And it got started when I discovered that monarch butterflies were hanging out in someone's yard on Cobb Island and I was able to tag a bunch at one time. I took them to the coffee shop here on the island at that time and it was called Cobb Island Gallery. And the owner, Linda Riggs, saw how excited the adults got into this tagging of monarchs and watching them and the kids were excited. And she said, we need to harness this excitement and do something. So we ended up creating Monarch Mania and so she was my co-chair for a couple of years and now I have another person who is my co-chair and that's Mike Burnham. Monarch Mania is a event that is an educational activity that shows people the importance of protecting and conserving the monarch butterflies. But it is to encourage people to plant milkweed, for the host of the monarch, which is the only type of plants they can lay their eggs on. And then it also encourages people to plant 
nectaring plants so they have something to drink on their migration. And they're headed now from as far north as Canada all the way down to Mexico. And it's very exciting that you can get to tag these little insects. And it's a community science project, formerly known as citizen science, but now community science. And you put a little teeny sticker on them that is a um, non uh, radio tracking or satellite tracking thing. It's just a sticker. And then when, if they do make it to Mexico or are found somewhere between here and there, they can figure out how far they traveled and where they ended up making it to. So when we tag a monarch butterfly on its migration, we're tagging generation four, which is the fourth generation of the year. They're the only ones that migrate to Mexico. They live longer than the second, third generations, and they are going to live up to about six months or so, whereas generations two and three are only living about two weeks to a month, and maybe maximum six weeks. And so we tag them with a very small sticker on their lower outer right wing. It's part of a, that community science project called Monarch Watch, and any person can do it. It's community science, you just have to buy the stickers, and they go on the lower right outer wing. And that's because the professor in charge of the program, Chip Taylor, likes to be a good scientist and he requires us to put them on the lower right wing so you're always consistent with your scientific research. And it tracks them and um, it has an ID number on it. It also has the web address of monarchwatch.org. And if they are found between wherever they're tagged and Mexico, the um, person who tagged it will get a message and the person who found it will know where it went as well. And our data has to be in by December 1st for them to be able to put it in their database. The reason we tag monarchs is because monarchs are not as common as they used to be. There are concerns here in the U.S. and in Mexico as well as Canada and one of the problems here in the U.S. would be disappearing places they can lay their eggs on their host plants, like not enough milkweed, monoculture on farm, some farm areas that have chemicals made into the plant that are pesticides, and then also on occasion droughts and things affect them. So they are disappearing, and that's what's happening here in the U.S., but in their wintering grounds in the mountains of Mexico, they have to worry about deforestation, one of the problems with that is that um, now avocado companies are buying up land near those and the forest is being cut down. One of the things Monarch Watch has done though is help communities understand the importance of their resource and now they have discovered how ecotourism is a great thing and can help and also Monarch Watch donates uh, money to people who find tags in Mexico. So if somebody finds a tag and reports it, they get a monetary amount for reporting that. So that's a good thing. Well, even one person or, or family can make a difference in a situation like this. By planting those plants in their yard, by minimizing the use of pesticides and fertilizers in your yard, and using more organic products. And then at the end of the season, if you've got these things going in your yard and you have monarchs, get some tags from Monarch Watch, the community science project out of the University of Kansas. Anybody can buy them. That's how I got the tags we're gonna to use today for the festival. Been doing it for over 10 years and it's so much fun and even children can be taught to do it with just a little bit of tutoring and it will last a lifetime because if an it, country or nation loses its natural heritage, it loses a lot. And so with this, you can be a great steward and pass the earth and its wonderful gifts on to so many other generations.